Communication that came in. Uh, there's a notice of intent uh, to file for a permit to, uh, in Rockland for them to um, do some improvements to the fish pier. Um, again, just a notice of intention to file. So just sharing and passing it through as it came to our office. There's proposed dredge sites, uh, presumably somewhere in the vicinity of some of the fishermen, I would assume, from out here. But um, again, just a notice of intent to file. That's the if they dredge, that's the timeline that they would be dredging. So that's what they'd be dumping, right? Yeah, dredging and dumping, yeah. Thank you. So like with all that there, you want to do something better than just dump it in the ocean. <laughs> so if, when that if that comes out and they end up filing that, we'll get notice of the of the permit or the application and that'll be public. And, uh, presumably an opportunity for people to have public comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I was going to do a petition before. I understand there are a couple people. Um, there's just uh, presumably one. I mean, there's a couple on the call, so if you want to inquire if anyone has anything. Okay. Does anybody have anything for the board to consider in the general public? Okay, hearing none, we'll go on to committee and department reports and appointments, annual appointments. So you have a, Tanya made a uh, breakout there. Mm -hmm. so just an, as annually, there's a bunch of positions that need to be uh, approved. Mm -hmm. I move we approve the list of appointments. Second. Seconded by Phil Watson. All those in favor? Okay. Yes. Okay, road commissioner support. <coughs> I don't think we have a lot of attention. Yeah, they're trying to emphasize that at the moment. Um, I know some culverts that they're planning on replacing up on Fishhead Road at some point this week, if the weather allows. Um, yeah, I've had to touch up a couple of gravel roads uh, already. Otherwise, the position is posted for the full time driver laborer. Um, so far, as one applicant. So I'll keep that open for at least this week and see if you know, there's other interests as well. And so we're aware. Uh, treasurer's report. So I gave you, it wasn't in the packet when I sent it, but I printed it off. Um, so 
what's in that other pack, stack of papers there, but just an overview of, there are still a few um, accounts payable, presumably that would be coming in, invoices that would be coming in that were for services or things purchased in last fiscal year now. Um, that's gonna be charged off. This is where it stands as of today without that accounts payable um, balance. On the, on the town side, um, there's a few more things that will have to come in anyways, but as of right now, it's a, about 440,000 that was uh, unspent. Uh, some of the non town tax is higher than we budgeted, and we don't know what it's going to be when we budget. Um, either that or it's an error when I put the numbers in the original. We already paid the July one and put that in there too. No, I might have been just uh, carry. I said I carried over the wrong number. I carried over last year's numbers on that spreadsheet. Oh, okay. So, no, we do know. We know now because they run on a calendar year budget. Yeah, you just, yeah, it does look like you carried over the 2019. Okay. No, the 566 total was what they did budget. So, it's just a mistake on my part there. We went slightly over on Sharon. Yeah, and that was the, so with the insurance, they, they go, I believe, calendar year on that. And so the, the big one, you know, we kind of fly a little blind on that when we budget ours, because we don't know what the other half of the year is going to do. Um, that's where when we do health insurance for the employees, we usually do about 10%, not knowing. And on, the, on that one, the big one was workers' comp. I think we budgeted like 25% increase, and it was a little, whatever it was, the number we budgeted was a little bit higher than that, even. Um, so that's, again, that was just, past injuries and that'll hit a plateau at some point if we go without injuries um, and then eventually they'll come back down. I think it's like a three to five year kind of mm -hmm. capture, so. Any other questions? Okay, we'll go on to old business. Um, Hurricane Island Foundation tax abatement request. Um, we need to set a hearing date. Yeah, I asked Bo, he said that if we, if we were to meet, we had been doing the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month before things got shook up. So if we were to meet two weeks from today, it would be the first week in August, the first Tuesday. And that, I know that date he said that at the time I asked him it was okay. I don't know if you want to do it on that one or see if there's another date that would work better. If you want to do it before selectman's meeting or you know, separate from? How long do you anticipate it taking? Uh, it could be 15 minutes, could be an hour. I assume at least a half an hour. Five instead of five thirty. Yeah, we could have so hopefully a time clock and have that as that correct order. So, that that first week seven. would be okay. Yeah, yeah. that first week in August. So, August. what was what date day number is it? The first Tuesday. The August. First Tuesday. Yeah, I think it's August fourth. That's yeah, fine. Four, I, four, I, four, I, four. Should, I don't believe I'll be going anywhere. I can have that anywhere. Any other guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe, like, yeah, yeah. Maybe Tuesday, August 4th. I was over there for like two seconds today to pick up a phone because I wrote one. The journey then in May, I brought a gander of voice. All right, we're we'll going to the new business, Knox County Sheriff contract again. So I believe I met with most of you. I don't know that I got a hold of Jake. Um, I just wanted to touch base with you all. We, I am planning to meet with the sheriff on Thursday. About the contracts, you know, we've been operating without one, but still under the same conditions that we had had if we did sign. So, um, just wanted to circle back around because when we put in these these list of proposed changes before, uh, it didn't include the you know the housing bit, and you know, we said we'd take that up for the next contract. Well, we might as well take it up now if we're going to be reviewing all this. And uh, so, I just wanted to throw it up there before I meet with them because other things that have come to mind or. I um, wanted to talk about um, for some folks that had asked, I did put up a small short timeline um, going back as far as the, the study that was done in 06 about the local police department. Um, didn't go further than that. I'm sure there's a lot more missing in between, but um, I know there's been some frustration amongst the board and with the contracts and with the ability to fulfill it in terms of it. So just, you know, being that I'll be meeting with them soon, if there's things that you wanted to have come up, consideration just figure we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would like to have the commissioner come out and talk to us. Sorry. Sorry. I 
I'd like the commissioner to come out and talk to us. My commissioner? Yeah, yes. Um, I'm, I'm not pleased with what has occurred since the incident in June, and I don't believe the current deputy should be working out here. And I'm, I'm not going to sign a new contract. I don't see why we should be paying extra money for a service that we don't, in my opinion, receive. We already pay in to the county taxes that we're required to pay, which is supposed to provide us with police coverage. That's how I feel. I, I don't, it's like all of a sudden after that incident where, in my opinion, not the county dropped the ball. I know there was only so much they could do, but still, we had a murder, first time in our town's history, it happened on their watch. And ever since then, now all of a sudden it's, oh, we're going to start pulling everyone over for this and that, which we've been telling them about for years. So it's just too little too late, my um, So I want to hear what the commissioner's plan is to fix the issue, the trust that's been broken, in my opinion, between Knox County Sheriff and this community. So that's, that's how I feel right now. I am collecting other statements from other residents, um, and I will have more information to provide at future stage. Things need to change. What we can do in the town, I don't, I don't know yet. And maybe they have some suggestions, and we can we can try to do that. But I am not pleased with what has changed. You know, what, you know what happens in like um, Peaks Island and those places? I mean, they're in part of Portland. They're not part of Portland anymore. They seceded. So, do they pay Portland Peak? to do their. Yes, yeah, they're all over there. And Peaks is still part of Portland. Yeah. Oh, it is. Just, yeah. what's up? So Some of those islands are. Some are. Um, Long and Shabig are their own. Um, I'm trying to remember. I feel like they so, both have their own kind of set of contract. Mm -hmm. Peaks Island, I think. They struggle for coverage from the, from the city at times. And in the summertime, I think they send a reserve or you know, someone's able to go out there and respond to things, but I don't think that they have any as, pro, as much proactive as some would like to see. Well, I, it's been about 15 years since I spent any time in Peaks Island, but for all those years that I did spend time there, they even had their own building there and cover, their coverage was still constantly in office. Mm -hmm. the coverage was what? On Peaks Island. They would always they the Portland Police Department keeps a building on Peaks Island. And it might be kept by the, you know, in some way, other it's not just for the police department, but they have their own they had their own patrol unit and it was not hard to find that police officer ever. When you look at down the coast, down east, Swans Island has a contract with their county sheriff. Uh, uh, slightly different terms. Um, Quite similar to ours. It's similar, but you know the, some of the breakdowns of the cost here is very different. Um, and I think you'll find a lot of towns that rely on sheriff coverage generally. Uh, probably a lot of them feel if you're on the peninsulas. Probably generally feel that there could be more than less, uh, and it's just the reality of. Well, manpower, I presume. Um, but you talk about, you know, from folks on Deer Isle and Stonington, I mean, similar thing. I mean, they have county coverage. Um, I think they might even have a contract as well sometimes. Um, so some of it's just trying to understand the expectations. And that, that was one of the, on the spreadsheet I had shared, just kind of things to get you thinking about, you know, as we talk with the sheriff, I mean, there's a contract part, but take it a step further. And if, if there is frustration or, you know, not feeling as though, you know, our contract is serving us in the best way it can, you know, you know how, how do you, what are the expectations and how do we see that they might be able to restore or change how they police out here? I think we need just a little bit more accountability. Like we don't know. I mean, if they get a call, we don't know, like if they respond to it or if they don't respond to it, or, I mean, if, until someone comes up here and complains, we don't know that there's an issue. And I mean, some people just give up and don't, I mean, that's kind of, I've been asking for more accountability for three years. That's just the way I, I, I just want, 
I want if there's a call, I want to know if they maybe not every call, but I, I mean it would be nice to know like if there's a call that they responded to it or that they at least called to check on it and it was how it was handled, not just this list of oh there's 42 traffic stops and 13 hang ups, like do they do they find out why someone called and hanged up or you know. I just want some more accountability. That's what I, all I want to see. What we should get for what we pay. Exactly. I'd like to see more accountability too. And part of the difficulty is that uh, people have become so exasperated over the years that they tend to vent their frustration on social media instead of registering them either with us or with you or with the Knox County. And so when Moments like this come when we're reconsidering contractual obligations. We don't have the kind of ammunition that we might have if everyone made an official noise every time Knox County failed to respond. And they do fail to respond, or if they respond, they respond inadequately. And part of that reason is because they don't live here. And so you can only expect somebody to get here. So quickly, when oftentimes the urgency is, of course, mm -hmm. important. So you brought up the point that I think is important. It's, it does not say in here resident deputy. I don't believe anywhere, but I believe so. If we are going to pay this contract along with county taxes, then the deputy assigned to patrol this island should be residing on this island at least during the time that he is you know in any time when he might be called to do the the you know to, to get from north haven to here you know into town here takes a while yep. Yep. It, even in the best of weather let alone a raw night in the middle of winter so well, some of that goes to the expectation piece, right? And so there's parts of the, of the county at certain times of the day where there's only two deputies covering all of Knox County. Even if you take the islands out of it, you know, the, the geographical range in which it is, I mean, there, there are instances where they've, they've said that there are 20, 30, 40 minute response times even over there to get to places. And that's not saying that that's right, it's just a fact. Um, and it's similar to here if they're coming from North Haven. And it's not saying it's right or wrong, it's just it's a fact. And so, yes, if someone lived here, um, I think the contract certainly needs to be modified to make it clear that that's the expectation. Um, no, so but to, on the mainland, those 30 or 40 minute wait times, they're not paying 150 extra thousand dollars right. each for right. either. And, and that would be one thing if we were just paying our county taxes and we had to wait 30 or 40 minutes. Right. That's fine. But if we're going to be paying this extra hundred and whatever thousand dollars, then it should be a little bit more substantial coverage is all. You're saying... What? I also feel that um, the the deputy being on North Haven living there, so it takes 40 minutes to get from point A to point B on the mainland. Sometimes you can't get from North Haven to Violent Haven because of the weather. So I think that's a poor excuse to compare the time that you can get from one place to another. I agree, Eric, the deputy, if we're gonna pay the money, should reside on Violent Haven. Right. It's in the contract that we're paying for housing, for you know, electricity, fuel costs. Like, if we're paying for that, why aren't they living here? Well, we haven't lived in that way. Just a, a, a stipend at a lesser amount, housing stipends. It says we'll contribute to housing, but doesn't say where. So it's a lesser amount than what's what's allocated. Yeah, I, it's, if it's going to be in the agreement, you're going to provide lodging or whatever it is. They should, they should be here so that they can respond in a more timely manner. But again, I, at this point, I'm not willing to sign a new contract until there's some serious changes. Uh, but again, I would like to speak with Knox County Sheriff and see what they have proposed, what they are thinking about. I don't have I don't have all the answers. But with the commission, with the commission, yes, I, I don't have all the answers. And it needs to be a group effort, a team effort, whatever however you want to put it. But this I agree. has been going on for too long, in my opinion, where we've been saying these things aren't being done, these things aren't being done, nothing happens, and now the worst case scenario has happened, and it's handled very poorly. But, and, and 
I have statements from people of our supposed resident deputy sharing details of that crime at parties. I don't, I don't know, I don't know if it's legal or illegal. I haven't bothered to look up main statute on that, but at the very least, it's wildly, unprofessional, yes. wildly so. Grounds for immediate dismissal, one would think, but. I'd be right now, issues. I mean, yeah, I don't need at the moment. <clears throat> All right, does anyone else? So, Andy, perhaps the next step should be sent at the date. Which one of those three commissioners is our commissioner? Uh, Paul, uh, commissioner Pullman represents us, I think, and North Haven. Um, and I know the sheriff is, you know, willing to have conversations with us. Um, so I meet with them Thursday morning to, you know, along with the items on the list there or on, the, on the screen that we talked about last time. I'll bring up the housing piece again. Um, again, we didn't have it addressed in that draft this last time. Then. Um, and invite them to have a join a meeting with you. Right, I'd, um, I'd like them to be here. So we can basically officially, hey, these are the complaints we have received. We are now communicating it to you. What are you gonna do about it? So I agree that in the past, people have complained to us, but not complained officially but on the record. Mm -hmm. I wanna make it official so that something has to be done. Well, it should be. So to make it official, just from Keith Freeman Information Act, you said you had statements? I'm gathering statements. Okay. I, I, I want to have that have information it. presented to them so that they can say, hey, this is coming from this community. These are people who live here. These are their complaints. I, mean, I would advise you to ask them if it's okay if those statements can be put on the official record. Right. And okay. if you bring those statements to a meeting like this, yeah. they automatically become part of That's what I would like. Yep. Anything else on this? Okay, we'll move on to um, LRAP contract, Main Street Capital Funding. So this was the um, the grant we put, one of the grants that we put in for for Main Street. Um, this is the, oh, sorry, LRAP, um, not the grant. We do still need to sign the grant agreement for the MPI. Uh, the LRAP one's just the, the funding that comes in. Uh, excuse me for a minute. If there's somebody, a member of the public right now who would like to speak, how do they let you know or and you know? Well, there's a, there's a couple on the call today, but um, no one's raised their hand or spoke up to speak. So. Okay, so there's an option that they have that they have an access. Yeah, and I had, I'd advertised on the um, agenda this week to reach out to me for the login information. Um, same thing, different name. So we do have uh, the contract agreements for the Main Street project, the funding. So we put in a, a grant for uh, for a project total project cost for this grant of one point three million, I think it was one point two six. Um, in the state as the MPI program, municipal partnership um, agreement or initiative. Um, and so they've, they've awarded us $625,000 towards that project. Um, that's one, one grant of at least three big ones that we're trying to secure. Uh, there's another one that's out still to be, see it to be determined if we are accepted for it. Um, I think that one was a little over a million. Um, and then the next one will be the Northern Borders, uh, or that was Northern Borders. Then it'll be the Economic Development Agency grant. Is what Gabe and Nick are working on now, um, and that'll be for I think over two million. Um, so this was this was the first one that timeline came up for. So with, with the Main Street project, you know, the downtown master plan, and what we've outlined you know, representatively so far, uh, if this is something that you want to agree to, um, give us a good chunk of the good a good head start on that project in addition to our reserve funds. Um, See our sidewalk reserves. Yeah, I think between the, the roads and the sidewalk reserves that we have, again, the road reserve is limited to the state aid roads for the most part. Uh, I think between the two of them, we're about 750. So we can access that without right. anything else. So just, I mean, if we don't sign it, 
quickly will they give it to someone else is that the fear yeah i mean they're looking for the contract to be signed uh, to be able to lock it in um, you know we have i think i think two years to complete and, and usually you you need a, a, a short extension for whatever reason there's always variables that come up that you can't account for it um there's usually some the leniency so we commence in 18 months and completed in 36 or so really three years on this so we have to start it by 2022. And you'll have costs incurred before the construction too, right? So some of some of these grants will allow for us to have some of the engineering and, and professional costs associated with it completed too. So. This, is, this is just for the drainage of the sidewalk or can it be used for the road part too? Yeah. I mean, so we got to redo the road. So with the with this state contract, actually, it's the the state monies from this program won't do, deal with the sidewalks. So they're going the, the MPI is going to be road and drainage, like the okay. state aid road. Um, so we're partnering with them to help put additional resources into the state aid roads that wouldn't otherwise go into it. And so generally, what they did last year was that that skinny mix of that light capital pavement. That's what they generally do on low volume, low use state aid roads. Um, and if, if the town needs or wants to do more than that, uh, and it's ahead of their timeline to do more, then there's these MPIs where you can enter these agreements with them and split the cost to do more. So that grant program will allow us to have a, a money to match potentially other grants from other sources as well. well I think it's probably a good thing that we accept yeah. it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Move forward. I move we sign the. Oh, right. It just has Amy's name on there, right? Sorry. Seconded by the plus name. Any more discussion? Are we are we voting to have Amy sign it because it's his name on the contract? And that, yeah, I I amend my motion to read that we authorize the town manager to sign the LRAP contract. Okay. Seconded by the plus name. All in favor? Yes. All right. Although it's falling at home, that means some real progress has been made for sidewalk and drainage improvement on Main Street. Finally. <laughs> All right, we'll go on to Caring Place Bridge and Bid Review. So with the the bids that went out, the bid that went out, there was one bid cast and returned to us. Uh, unfortunately, the the bid came back higher than anticipated or estimated for construction. Uh, the estimated construction budget was 450,000 for that that bridge, and the bid came back at 694,550. Uh, the bidder was uh, Jake Barber. Um, so there's a breakdown there uh, to show you what, you know, how some of the numbers in there. I know one thing: the engineers were still going to follow up with them just just for the sake of understanding a little bit more. Um, you know the cost of a of a culvert precast culvert is not but the culvert itself is nowhere near that total um, the direct estimate they got or direct quote they got uh, so there's parts of it just when you do the bidding process that you know you have to account for and, and assume things and, and i don't say pad but you have to be sure if you're going to give a lump sum bid you don't want to get hosed on the contractor side and um, so that was what they felt they was required uh, to get the job done and what yes, did you say about the culvert the precast. the precast culvert, um, it was just said it was the, the, the direct buy cost for the culvert itself is not the majority of that $300,000. The culvert itself came in at uh, almost a tenth of that. So that price there is the so cost and install. Right. Well. Yeah. And the, so the so helical that. piles that have to get put in there, they're not sure how many there would be. So it's, it's, we're assuming that there's other costs associated with you know, just beyond the culvert directly. That well, I mean, I would think there'd be a cost for the culvert, then they have the mobilization and that would, I would think that would include moving the culvert out here, not lumping into that top number. I mean, right. well, how and again, again, the engineers are going to reach out to the bidder just to get an understanding of some of it. I mean, when we received, received the bids for the garage, the mobilization for the garage and salt shed construction was a third to half of what the mobilization for this is. So we don't, not, I mean, totally not knowing, you know, is there something more involved in mobilization or was it just the unfamiliarity of doing business, you know, that scale of business out here, because it is a complicated and costly thing to figure out. You've never been out here. 
Um, there were things that we talked about trying to do and, and provide information to the bidders before they submitted bids. Been out here. Yeah. yeah, certainly different than probably bringing out just the truck. But yeah, so I mean, I think that's something that we need to understand and try and utilize engineers to find out from people that have bid or have done work out here to understand we have a lot of capital projects and you can't keep putting things out to bid and being this far below the estimate right. uh, with the estimate. So um, there's a lot for us to learn still with the bidding climate that we have, as well as what it takes to get jobs done out well, here. Well, there's not so much, you know, this is another bid prepared for, prepared by uh, Wooden Crown. Wooden Crown, sorry. So, I mean, it's not really a point for us to learn, you know, they're supposed to know what the bidding environment is. Right, it's just... Well, they went out and asked a bunch of people what they thought it would cost, that they've done business with, right. and then we put it out, and none of those companies bid on it. So, right. I mean, if one of those companies had bid on it, but they probably got bigger projects where they don't need to put people on an island. Yeah, I mean, the feedback they got in particular on the bridge was the bridge itself. I mean, it's just too small of a project for a big company to come out, out here and all out. Housing has become a big one for both projects, trying to figure out housing. You've got crews with both the companies that are looking to put bids in that either have employees or, or workers that maybe don't want to, or maybe they do don't mind coming out here for weeks on end to do a project, being away from their families. Um, you know, that's a hard thing to try and compensate for. Um, but then there's the cost of housing and where, where do you go? And so the housing thing came up for both of these is a, you know, what do we do? And it's going to continue to be a thing for us as we try and do capital projects out here. I thought the, the whole point of doing the bridge was to do it in the off season. So mm -hmm. getting a place to perform to stay would have been a little bit easier than, I mean, yeah. maybe the town graduate was playing for me. I would assume that you try and start everything in September where you right. could get housing more readily and the ferry boat's easier and everything but i don't know how people get on that was the thought going into it okay i didn't know <laughs> i can't remember reading like the start date i thought if i saw it for this one was like november to like april or something like yeah that. there was a window for this one because you're in the water and having to work so there's permit extra permitting so you know one thing we, we had talked about after the bid came in with the engineer was the a uh, temporary road at 89,000, estimated at 89,000, or bid for 89,000. And then the not included in, in this list is the permitting fees associated with that temporary bridge. So that was another $16,000 if we put that permit in. Um, so you're over 100 grand just for the temporary bridge, which I think is easily double what the first group of engineers were anticipating it with it might be. Um, you know, so then we started talking about, well, geez, unfortunately, it's too long of a project. I think it's like they figure estimating at least three weeks, two to three weeks, probably closer to three. You know, if you only had a couple households up there, maybe you could do something to get different means to get across or temporary housing. But there's a lot of households and a lot of work that gets done on that side of the bridge almost every day. So I don't think that that's a reality. Uh, but we did talk about it briefly. Well, if you could cut it down to a week, I mean, you could probably do it by not three weeks. <clears throat> nothing back on this uh they didn't i mean either either way it's uh, we don't have a you know it's well beyond what the approved budget is yeah the 640 or the uh 694 550 is uh, doesn't include the engineering and all that so again a construction estimated construction cost uh, for the purpose of what we were going in at was 450. Uh, so it's almost 250 and all the engineering so Again, another 50% over on it. Yes. Yeah, it's like, like, approaching like double again. Of the right. <clears throat> How does the military build those temporary floating bridges? Like, I mean, is there a way you can rent those and put one of those up real cheap? Uh, you know, for instead of putting all this dirt in, I mean, they do it everywhere when they're. I mean, we, all we need to do is get a car across. Right. I mean, you think that would be cheaper than, and I don't know about the permitting, but cheaper than trying to construct a big rock thing up there. I don't know if anyone's ever looked into it, but I just thought of it when I was watching. I know we asked a bit of Gartley and Dorsky when they worked on it with us. Uh, I don't recall now what the answer was to that four years ago, but um, you know, we can certainly ask again of Wooden and Perrin to see if it's something they can look into. I mean, I don't know how that how it works in 
where it drains all the way up to its own bottom, and there has to always be water. I mean, right. I'm not mentioning it, but you think that would be easier if they did it to work? Well, they are going to again circle back with the bidder just, just to get a better understanding of what some of this was. Is, are there ways to, it's like with the garage, are there ways to value engineer and modify any of the, of the bid? Um, they're also going to look in house to see if it's something that um, and Curran can just basically oversee in subcontract. And it, can they, they got a team within that sometimes does design build things. So they are going to just look within within the, the company to see if it's something that their that division feels could be done or not and just give us feedback. Is this still open for additional bids or is it closed? It's closed. Well, potentially we'll have to reopen it again at some point. Yeah, I mean, if there isn't a, a, a means to get done, you know, that you feel is in the best interest of the town, I mean, we might have to just go back out to bid with I mean, a, is a there different. Is there another bridge project coming up in the future? We can bundle two of them together, maybe. There's always Lane's Island Bridge. will have yeah. to still get the work done. Uh, uh, they, they never did come bridge, out. So, yeah. Well, it is, but it, the state won't be doing the work. They'll be putting right. a bid yeah, out for they, someone they to must find a company that wants to do both. Right. True. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be more incentive to do both. All right. More revenue. And I believe the state actually turned down all of it. Yeah. I mean, if you recall, I mean, unfortunately, for whatever reason, we're in a time now where. We saw last year a lot of state paved jobs and projects just got canceled because they were bids came back way higher than budgeted. Yeah. Whether it's labor costs or the ability to have a lot of jobs, and you don't really, I don't know, it's, there's a lot of question marks right now out there. Okay. So presumably you'll reject, you'll want to reject oh, that yeah, bid that came in. Yeah, yeah, right. Sorry. I move that we reject the bid from Jay Clarver. Okay, for the first part, yes. Second. Seconded by Donald Poole. All those in favor? Yes. I mean, can you go, can you yourself go back at him and say, would you vote for this number? I think you'd be better off trying to figure out, the you know, uh, well, through the engineers, know about but it. also just to understand. I mean, I think it's really wise to understand the, you know, did they just overestimate in some areas and just missing some information or you know, are we just needing to realize that this is just where the cost of the work out you know you remember the sidewalk years was it probably four years ago we put the sidewalk bids out to go to the ferry terminal and those came back two or two hundred and fifty thousand over what was expected. That's that's several years ago. Right. So I mean there's just there's something about working out here that scares contractors on big jobs and it's it's very nice people. There's a lot that can go wrong with the ferry boat. You're at the mercy of, of the weather and someone else to transport you. And that's not something that contractors like to see because days of that work, it's just a lot of money for them. Right? If they don't make the ferry, that truck driver just makes it pay for the yeah, yeah. Pay yeah. All right, let's go on to propose uh, EMS rates. Thank you, Carrie, for being so patient. I meant to make a motion to put this at the beginning of the meeting. Good job, Eric. Yeah, well, it's just usual me screwing up. <laughs> uh, so it's been uh, a little uh, while since we've looked at the rates again. I think it was 2018, maybe the last time we did. And I think we, all we really changed was the that ambulance wait time and I think the the airplane cost. Um, so there's been a few. The Medicare rates were updated uh, this past year. Um, other fees have gone up, like the ferry boat fees have changed in the last year. Um, you'll see the, the biggest uh, increases are in the ferry costs on a percentage base there. Um, we do, and then the rest of them, I did just try to keep it around 3% um, on like the ALS 1, 2, BLS, um, to try and keep it close to what the Medicare rates are. Uh, Andy, we, oh, sorry. Andy, Andy, we did sorry. add in the South Thomaston to the airplane. Yeah, so when we take the plane over, there's times, uh, every time someone's got to pick up the patient over there. South Thomaston, we have an agreement with them that Kerry worked on and uh, we were trying to use before. And um, at times, if it requires a paramedic, for example, or if there's a paramedic working with them, we, there's a $125 fee uh, when we pay that. And so that's something that should be included as a cost of flying a patient over. Um, otherwise, we're, we're not billing, we can't bill for it. So. What is the TGH rate? 
All oh, right. So that, that column there is the billing company we use. And that was just the recommendation they had was to just as a starting point, just take the rate you, you have today and, and uh, multiply it by 40%. And so that's what the 40% would look like if we had done that. So it gives you comparisons. You know, some of the, unfortunately, collecting on insurance for medical stuff and ambulance fees is unfortunately a game that's difficult to play and you never get all of it back. Um, and so, you know, trying to figure out, you know, Oh, see, you know, services that are in it to make money and you know, running for profit, they have to overbill certain patients, right? The ones with private insurance and sometimes pay more. We're not in a position where presumably we're trying to, we're not going to make money on it, right? We need to break, it's close to break even or whatever the goal you set for it is to collect revenue. Uh, we're a long way from that generally. So do we get these rural rates, I say? We are rural and I think in some cases, super rural, um, I think is what it's called. So. Um, we should look at something similar to what that is, and that's that's what Medicare is willing to pay. So we, all, I mean, we get seventy five percent on most of the lines, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that would be a good. I mean, it seems fair. I don't think many people would be upset. I mean, we have to pay for the service. I mean, costs go up. Before it get back on to the customer. I mean, in the ferry things, we don't have any control right. over. Exactly. Those are the biggest increases. So right. mm -hmm. if they want to complain, they can complain to the governor or Bruce right. Stanton or something. Complain, like that. complain to Mark Pagan. He's very receptive. Yeah. I mean, we've spent about one hundred and sixty to one hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year for the last four years, um, or three years, on the ambulance service, and I think we budget for revenue at about fifty, and sometimes we see as much as a hundred. And so every year you're you're subsidizing some of it. Presumably, some of it just goes to a collection if it has to, um, or it eventually might come back. Um, but every year, if you look at that on the surface. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we try and collect money at the transfer. It's not that we should be fair to do, but that we try and break even on just what we send away, not on the, the mm -hmm. wages. So, I mean, is that what we're trying to do here? I've never under, I've never heard of what the goal is. I mean, if, if, you know, whenever you look at rates and I remember hearing about the transfer station goal at one point, but I don't know if on the EMS side, if, if there is, I mean, a lot's changed in the last few years on the cost of things, so. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure if there was a goal that we were trying to meet. I, I never heard. So. Do you ever hear anything here? Do you got to get along yet? No, to try to get, try to get off right. ambulance fees? Or? Yeah. Was there like a goal to collect, you know? You well, know I, I feel know. like that number has been thrown around before, but I can't remember. Well, I mean, unless we know what the goal is, these numbers seem fine to me. Well, I move we approve the proposed rate for 2020. Second. And they're obviously good with Gary if you wrote them, right? I, I, I put them up there. I mean, usually in the past, the, the person that's on it running a call isn't gen generally too concerned about the, the collection and chasing the money. Uh, yeah. They need to fill out the report so we have a chance to get the money. But um, in the past, there was a little bit of a gap there. So, I mean, I, you know, Obviously, Carrie to... doesn't have any objections to these. That's well, I shared it with her. I don't know if there's any that did come up that jumped out at her, or Carrie, was there any thoughts on or concerns with any of those? No, I think they look good. I mean, I don't think we've gone up a lot in any area other than things that actually have been, become more uh, expensive as far as the ferry and the plane. But um, the other stuff has gone up marginally, and other people have gone up a lot more. So I think we're very safe. My motion has been seconded by a dollar for you. All those in favor? Yes. Okay. Um, Department of Public Works back of possible consideration for purchase. So I gave you on uh, your board packets four, four bids, three for brand new machines, one used one, and then yesterday I got another quote for another, a different used one um, that just had come in um, from that weekend. Uh, and so I have a spreadsheet here that shows, you know, the base price for each of those, uh, whether they're new or used. And I didn't add trade-in values to the other two because only the one company had given us a trade-in value. I don't know. Trade-in value is only $11,000. That's what they're offering. Not to say that it couldn't be you know, negotiated. It still runs, right? It does. It, it leads. Like 
be used as a dump or somewhere, like you said, to let it go for that little. Yeah. That's just my feeling. Yeah, yeah I mean, they. they brought the dump truck. Yeah, that's that, the way I feel. I mean, that's a lot of you know, Kenny's pointed out that, it, you know, I don't know to the extent of the, the dollar amount of, of work that it needs on it. Um, you know, but he did mention that there's some structural or some steel on there that would need to be replaced on it. Um, there's obviously new tires that put on it still. Um, so, I mean, you, you're probably looking, I'm, I'm guessing, at five or six, at least five or six, if not 10 grand, probably in improvements. I think it was two years ago that we put about 10 grand into that one. Um, this year, we didn't have to luckily put much into it at all. Um, doesn't get used much, to Jake's point, you know, whether it's worth holding on to for that little of a, a trade in quote or not, but to you. Um, it's not something that's proposed to be covered in through a loan from for next year's budget. It's not something that's you know, proposed to be purchased outright next year's budget. So if, if you were to consider doing this, it'd be to use the reserve funds that have been accumulating for the last few years in the public works equipment, um, which is right now at about $102,000. Um, proposed to put another twenty five in it, I believe, this year at town meeting. So you'd have enough after even without that vote um, to be able to go with one of the options, if that's what you wanted to do. Without the trade-in value, um, you'd be able to you know, buy the machine and still get um, at least at least the thumb. I and mean, I think that the one thing it doesn't have is a thumb arm, not, neither of the used ones do. And so at a minimum, we'd want to make sure that we're getting a thumb put on. Otherwise, a lot of what we use it for would be useless um, mm -hmm. on the back of part. Um, you know, whether we, whether we jump on and, and get the hydraulic front coupler right from the get go, or whether we let that come out of equipment repair and the operating budget, um, the whole other thing. Well, either way, either way, fine. So, well, there is one lease option. Okay. So their, their lease options were, you know, they don't offer what I was thinking, like a, a lease rent kind of thing. You know, they're all lease to own. I mean, it's just like going to a bank oh, getting okay. lease financing, basically. Okay. It's not not what it's I was thinking a, they would do. It's not a lease it and you take it back in. Right. Okay. Which probably makes sense. I don't know why you want to take that. I, mean, I think for us, with just one piece, I mean, it's less likely. I mean, some people just do the three year thing and then go back and drop trade them in or whatever, but that's, which, that's what those were for three years. One of these ones, the one that we have. Uh, yeah. it's the Beauregard. Yeah. Um, there's two ones that look used to me. One so of them the, has a warranty and one of them doesn't. So they were able to get the warranties on both the used ones, I believe. There's so few hours and they're still just a, within a year old. Uh, but the one that's base price is at 109.9. That's the one that we have that's right now. That's the one we have here right now. Yeah. And that one's not, the front of that one's not plumbed for the hydraulics, I believe he said. Hmm. What a substantial difference in that one. Well, then, between the two used ones, there's like a $15,000 difference. Again, one of them, again, had the hydraulics in the front, and the other one had to be added in, and that was part of the cost that he had given us in the 1099. It's not a separate add out, you know, build out because this is something that we you know, generally need um, or have in the current one. So, what is that? Yeah. What is your recommendation? I mean, you're at a Sound. point where you know if you guys want to if you want to consider we had what 120 ish and or 100 102 in there right now approximately and then we'll just, uh, propose another 25 to add to it as we have been for the last so five years typically tomorrow after tomorrow we might have 125 in there mm -hmm. 127 if people mm -hmm. should we can we wait till you can i mean two, with, for two if you do two weeks I mean, to, to, Make sure we get the money before we make a decision or I mean, either way we have the money. I mean it's really about just looking at the equipment we have and whether you know we feel we're at a point we probably put 20, 25 grand in the cat. And the last work that got done on it was a lot better new than we anticipated when it went up there. It was only about thirty five hundred bucks. And we were thinking it was gonna be new injectors and a whole heck of a lot more. So um, we're fortunate in that front. Um, but it's got, I think they said. Seems it. like they've gotten a lot of work on with this one. I mean, I've seen, seems like they've done a lot of ditching in the last. Mm -hmm. two the only, months. Is it because it, 
easy to work with or just that it's been running the whole time? I, it's, a, it's a mixture of things. I mean, it, the biggest thing is that it, I mean, just dedicating time to do it. Oh, yeah. right? There's always stuff to do. And it, you know, the last few years, we've been doing a lot of on gravel road work, surface work. Uh, it takes up a lot of time. You know, just committing to the task of ditching um, is long overdue. So, you know, there's advantages to that piece of equipment that they prefer over the cat generally. It's design and ease of use or whatever, but it doesn't, you know, one or the other doesn't make it easier or why they're doing it. So they don't care. The one at the, the, one at the transfer station has stopped becoming a reliable backup for public works. And so if it, if it goes out, Puts them in a tough spot, and that machine. Well, I mean, I'm I'm not saying we shouldn't buy one. I'm saying which, which option is the, the best option. I mean, I would go with that once the board guard um, for the 94 465, including a trade in. I mean, it only has 100 hours on it, and it's coming with a warranty. Oh, it's up. Did you? That's the one we I added that just got on Monday yesterday. Oh. I was looking at the paperwork, I wouldn't look at it if you guys had seen it. Description. <laughs> that, that one that came in yesterday with a base price on that, it's the same machine, uh, just came from a different place. And, it's, it, it was, and it's got the one year warranty and the two year power, like what it says here one year full machine warranty, two year power train warranty. Oops. I mean, I'm not really worried about the three year GPS watch part of it. And that was a big part of when we were looking at it was to make sure we still let me just see if I get it right here. I can I can I can verify that it does. I thought he said it did because it's about almost the exact same thing as the other one he reported us. Um, it's not listed it in there specifically, as long as but I'll have a warranty on it, then I'll go with that. But yeah, once just a couple thousand dollars more and got like the Better warranty would be better to go with that. I mean, just the case. I'll, I'll confirm it with him because they said he was able to get it. He had to ask, he was able to get it on the one you have, the 1099 base price. And in this one here is almost the exact same thing. So I'll, I can ask. So would we, would we trade in the one that we have now? Or would we just turn yeah. that? Huh? Is that what we want to do? We want to trade in? I thought we wanted to. Mm -hmm. I thought the discussion was to keep it and, yeah. and then we'd have a backup. <laughs> That would, or we take the one that we have at the transfer station and use it and put the one that we have now up there. Isn't that what you said? I can't remember. Well, so the way we, I mean, the issues we have, right? So in the, when it comes winter time, you're going to, you know, we're separating the salt sand storage from Main Street. If you go off of Main Street with it, you're going to need a loader for that. You know, whether you choose to rent one for a couple months out of the year and just have it there for that purpose or whether you, Look at shifting and keeping all three units. I mean, part of it was not knowing what the trading value would be. If it wasn't going to be much, maybe it is worth it because it'd be a lot less use, and maybe we can continue to get four, five, six more years at least out of it without I mean, having to spend too much. Six, ninety-seven. I can't remember. I, I, remember. I think it's a. I want to say it's a ninety-seven or 02, somewhere in that range. The oldest one. Yeah. No, the one we got now is a twelve. And they're only going to give us eleven thousand dollars for that one. But the one at the transfer station. Oh, the really old one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, yeah, no, it's one at the transfer station yeah, that we had them look at. Oh, I yeah. thought it was okay. Oh, yeah. So oh, no, I, I, that I, makes I, sense. Yeah, I could. Huh? Sorry, I could have cleared that up. Sorry. That's why I was confused. Why they're only going to give us eleven thousand dollars for? Oh, I'd hope the cat would get more. The cat that's still what has some years. That's why I was confused. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah, that makes sense to trade that one in. I should have specified. Mm -hmm. So we do have a question with warranty. So I move that we purchase the backhoe from Borgard for including the trading value for ninety four four sixty five from the from the public works reserve, correct? Equipment reserve fund contingent on warranty. Second. Seconded by Jay Thompson. Any more discussion? Okay, all in favor? Yes. Okay. The fourth and town manager. All right, I know there's been a few requests from town committees uh, members to use the space in here. Um, 
you know, they're having a hard time with participating in the, in the meetings on our behalf from their homes with the broadband uh, that each of them might have. Uh, for some, it's just a limitation of, just as you had, the limitation of being able to conduct a meeting from a virtual standpoint instead of in person. Um, so I don't know how we feel. I mean, for me, I, if we were to consider it, it have, in my opinion, it have to be after hours when we're not open with the staff in here. We'd have to have it booked ahead of time. We still have to have no more than five people in the room by the standards you know, the guidelines they have um, out right now. Um, so I mean, it's, Excuse me, why would it have to be after hours? That'd be my recommendation. So you're not in here with the staff at the same time. The staff is in there. Yeah, I mean, they're sharing the same bathroom, the same entrance, and we still got business going on too. I mean, but business hours under five, right? Mm -hmm. I would think that most committees meet after that. Yeah. How many committees are asking for space? Oh, uh, town committees. I think I've had at least three, if not four. We paid two. We paid one. Yeah, the planning commission and planning board. I know are interested. The broadband committee, I believe. We've got members of that that can't even meet virtually to talk about broadband. <laughs> uh, what was the other one? Um, I mean, I'm fine with it after hours and as long as it meets the guidelines. Are they set to change in August or is it going to look the same? I mean, I know a lot of the other states are doing as good. I mean, Maine seems to be kind of, I didn't know, I couldn't remember what the phase for August 1st was, if it was going to be more lenient or if it's going to be the same. So. Yeah, I mean, we're so far away from, you know, when that plan first came out in May now. I mean, yeah, I, I think the, I mean. I the school's reopening guidelines is probably a good indication of, you know, how you might align returning, you know, some of the other services back, um, you know, more available. Um, you know, no, like I just meant about, County. like, is it still going to be five people that can meet in this room, or is it going to be, like, 10, maybe? I, I don't think there was anything past okay. August to give us a better idea. I mean... I know I saw FIEC having a meeting up at the bandstand yeah. and someone was sitting in different all the way there around. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an option if people come in, they're all six feet apart outside. So. Yeah, but, for some it would work. It's just you got to be able to have the remote option for, you know, should there be you know, people involved or yeah, like physically people that need to speak. Or, when would we allow town committee to meet here, providing they? Yeah, I know at least at least one, if not two committees, you know, some one of their members said that you know as a group they were willing to on their way out wipe everything down and you know, so that would certainly help or we just have to I mean, just like spray the tops of everything off of the door and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. I mean, yeah. are we going to supply like a bottle of stuff? Then, yeah, yeah. I think that would be pretty easy to do. I it's second that was most of Okay, so it's been moved and seconded by Jake Thompson. Any more discussion? You got yeah, this, um, this is Ellen. Um, I'm on the planning. Hi, I'm on the planning commission. We, uh, are you appointed a sixth person to the commission. So we now have six people. So we're over the five limit. Does that mean we won't be able to use the town office? Be able to use it, but one would have to dial in, would be my understanding. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to follow the governor's orders, as we're asking everyone else as best they can to do so, um, you know, you wouldn't want to put you know, more than five in this space by those standards. Um, presumably, some might still choose to be remote. You know, we've got I mean, we got a board member tonight who's at home joining us remotely still. So, I mean, I've seen that happen elsewhere where, you know, some, some have to come in or do come in and Others still prefer to remote in because it's easier or you know, safer for them. Yeah, we've had a lot of trouble with the internet. The more people we have on the call, the more members, the more difficulty we have. Our last meeting was a nightmare. Well, if you had five people here and one person calling, like we do tonight, it's not. Yeah. It's, it's not. It's in. not yeah. perfect, but it's better. I think it's the best we can do, Ellen. Really. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for considering it. We do have the server and the computer. I do need to get that. Um, oh, wait, I'm sorry. So we've been in motion. We never did end up building. Is there any more discussion? Okay, all in favor? Yes. 
Uh, we've got to coordinate with IT to have um, the server set up. It is here. Um, you know, when we do that, presumably it could be the better, you know, at least I'm, I'm assuming at least half the day, if not a, almost a full day to would be down, we wouldn't have any of our computers running at that point. So whenever that happens, um, that being at least uh, the few upgrades we'll be able to do to programs and software as a result of getting the new server. They can't come on Saturday. What's that? They can't work on a Saturday. They may, I can ask. I mean, there's still work that the staff would be doing, you know, if they're in here, because they wouldn't be able to be open up oh. customers. Um, so yeah, but I can ask them if they can, so it doesn't interrupt. You know, is, it, is it that big of a deal to close for one day at a time in there? I don't think so. Customers, I mean, we've been closed pretty much for as long as we advertise it ahead of time. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a problem. It'll probably yeah. Saturday would cost more. Yeah, I mean, if they, yeah, if they're willing to do it Saturday, it's no extra cost. Fine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't see a problem. Like I said, as long as we give notice, mm -hmm. I don't see a problem. Um. Tobacco quotes, position posted. Um, I think everything else we've already covered. Do I have on there? Report a number. Bill. At the last meeting, we talked about doing something to uh, thank Carl for his service. We can settle on that. So we do. I'd be happy to write a tribute for everyone's consideration for the wins, if that would be satisfactory. But I think the flash of that with airfield. No, he's talking about the car. Oh, it's that couple. Yeah, it sounds good to me. Yeah, I think that's great. Thank you, Phil. Okay, and then the Kevin Ford is Memorial. There's already a big, big uh, movement on uh, foot to do it among the public without our participation. I certainly think we have to participate in this system on our own. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's what kind of why I asked what the airport field was called last week because I wasn't sure that it was already named something. Yeah, yeah and I've looked into it. I haven't found a whole lot of real good information on the history behind the naming that it has now. Yeah, that's um, kind of what I was curious about. There's folks that we looked at old town meeting minutes. I mean, from the best we can tell, you know, we do, there is a trust, um, you know, Mary Talbot State you know, Trust that we have. And what, my guess is that money, you, I, I the Mary Talbot Trust. Yeah, what did you find? That she left the trust to the, and some of her money was left to the town. And so we have a trust in her name. And so my guess is that at some point, some money was used from that trust to put into the airstrip. And in doing so, that, that's the best. Thing that we found so far, we haven't found anything that officially authorized the naming of it yet. Um, that's our best guess. Um, there, there was obviously Kevin does did have, and you know, we still need to do the runway extension. Um, you know, and he he'd been wanting to put a um, like a shed city type thing up at the airport here. Um, so I don't know if some of that, and we still need to move forward on some of that. And I don't know if if there's a way to you know, do some of that in, in his memory and, and consider renaming the airstrip in his name. I know some people have kind of re had asked if we could do that. Um, some people what? It asked if we could rename that runway in his name. So I don't know if that, I haven't looked into the process on that, um, but some have asked if we could do that. So I don't know if we wanted to kind of bundle all that together and, and try and uh, do all of that. And I mean, I think we should try and get the extension done that he was working on. I mean, You'd already put a lot of legwork into finding out about the zones the you know. Well, that's, that's the easy stuff, but I mean, when it comes down to the construction and getting all the material and doing it. Uh, it was only, it wasn't, I thought, it, well, I can't remember what they said now, sorry. Well, I suggest that, that you move forward in that vein and see if it's possible to rename the airstrip in his honor without Offending or violating some earlier agreement. Sure. I mean, could it be like that Kevin wanted a strip at the Mary Talbot you know, field or whatever? You're right. Like, yeah, I mean, combine the like amount. on in the football stadiums, it'll be like Pepsi Field and AT&T Stadium, you know, like they have kind of, I mean, 
like the, the runway well, could be dedicated to him and the, the whole area could be the very south that doesn't come, you know. Maybe that's a way that we could do it also though. He wouldn't reveal himself after he right. you know. But yeah, we should definitely do something. I mean, he's yeah. been instrumental in the SRC mm -hmm. for a long number of years. Um, now, but one more thing in the public bathroom. Mm -hmm. The several businesses have asked about opening the public bathroom in <coughs> the old fire hall because people are asking to use the bathroom. There are no places that have kids in time allowed to let you use the bathroom. And so the places that remain are very limited. The motel would be available to anyone wanting to use the one in the office, but there's not always someone there, so it's not apparent. So I'd like to see what we can do about opening that bathroom. Still looking for a cleaner. Uh, what have we done to look? I've inquired with a few people that clean and haven't had been successful yet. Who? I've inquired with a few people who do clean and just haven't been successful yet. So I was, I was going to see if anyone in house wanted to try and do it. It's already on the payroll. Um, I haven't done that yet. But. I mean, is there anyone at any of those businesses that would take it upon themselves or one? Ask their employees that I mean we pay the, the hourly rate you know but if one of their employees they can spare one of their employees for a half an hour you know to go over there and clean the bathroom then we can open it up. So. Yeah, I mean, if anyone's interested, they can certainly reach out. But I'll continue to see if, if maybe there's someone on staff we already have as well that you know may want to do it as an extension of what they do now. In addition to that, it's just a matter of having someone be able to want to clean it. I'll make I'll make a couple of too. That's all I have. Does anyone else have? Thanks for getting the pothole filled in on my own. Did it? Hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> I saw that it didn't the other day. Well, okay. It's um, right by the where the tuckle patch is, so I thought they could fix it. Damn, I forgot to bring up the sewer rates. I don't know if you wanted to uh, talk about that quick. Yeah, you want to do that now? Sure. Um, so the commissioner, the sewer commissioners met today. Um, and I did, I printed it out for this meeting because we did just meet today. Um, but a consideration for FY21 budget for the sewer. Um, you know, it, one of the challenges we've had this last year in particular is I think they, we spent about 10 grand on just one of the pump stations alone this year, mostly due to age. You know, some of the components of that were just at a time where they needed to be replaced. It was the hardest used, heaviest used one. Um, you know, but it's also a point in the system where pumps and other components are 15 plus years old and they're just, they're also going to start. So one of our concerns raised there was about keeping up with the maintenance um, as that continues to grow. Uh, we did have the fiscal sustainability plan done that had was like capital improvement plan. So we, we do have, well, I think it was somewhere between 800,000 and a million dollars worth of uh, improvements to make, you know, that are kind of phased and planned over the next probably 10 or 15 years. Um, you know, so keeping with that in mind, you know, there would have to be a slight increase um, in the user fees to be able to get the um, get the revenue to, to meet that. So, I, so the, the proposed budget's at $320,250, an increase of 3.5%. Um, so the rate you know, if you kept a fixed uh, charge, um, the 76 a quarter and the debt service fixed at 45 still and, and increase the volumetric charge. Um, so if you use it, you got to pay for it um, to $7 a unit. Um, that would raise enough money. Um, it'd be a 3.8% increase in the revenue. It'd raise, raise enough money to cover that proposed you know, expense. That would have been proposing. That's what the commissioners proposed. What does HCF mean? Uh, I think it's uh, 100 cubic feet. Okay. I assume that it was some kind of a volume, but I couldn't figure it out. I think that's what he said when I asked earlier. I mean, I'm not someone that uses the system, so I don't really know how much costs a normal family is not going to add a lot of money to. People's it's, it doesn't seem like it would, but I mean, it could. I mean, we can, we can maybe at the next meeting approve it and between then get some more information out. So, I mean, the, the fixed, you know, and I think I'll use mine for example. I think we're between 120 or 150 a quarter. 
Uh, it's two people, it's minimal household use. Uh, you know, but you've got $121 of it that's fixed between the debt service and the operating expense fixed charge. So, so you're between 10 and $30, $10 a month, maybe. Right. Just so so if, that, you, if that's at 560 a, a, a unit and you go to seven, you know, it's a, it's a slight increase, but the majority of it's a fixed fee. So we can run some of those numbers and look at a couple different use types and, and give you an idea of what that increase would look like under a couple of different scenarios. How does it work on the, um, the apartments? Do they just get a set? So there's equivalent users associated with, so for a single house, it's just one user. And if you've got something like the apartments, each unit's a user. Um, and so each unit is paying for so a debt and a fixed in, and, and then the volume charge on top of that. So those are presumably some of our biggest users, um, those apartments in the hotel. Um, but I mean, restaurants go based on how many seats they have and how many meals they serve. Well, I mean, it's not going to make someone at the apartments pay an extra look on out of what little they get every month, is it? We can look. I don't think the volume. I mean, they're the most, in, in the district that I can think of, they're some of the most at risk of, you know, I wouldn't want to put an extra burden on some little older people that are on fixed income that's all i'm worried yeah we've got 10-15 years of data now so I mean, we could certainly go back and kind of project what some of those changes i think it'd be pretty minimal um but we can project that and look at what it would be for a couple of different people for the next meeting bill uh, one more thing the sidewalk that we talked about before going down over the hill from here mm -hmm. north is really really dangerous and several people have complained to me about trying to walk in the street because the sidewalk is so dangerous and you wind up walking on the inside of that curve. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the prospect of getting something done there? What would you like then? Well, I like a new sidewalk. <laughs> well, you want to look at taking money from a reserve or public works budget, I guess we can, I mean, presumably it's going to need some sort of design work. Um, it's got layers. I don't know if you've looked at it close, but it's got what you get from is it Ingerson? That was Tarr Street. Uh, and down, yeah. uh, going to the intersection, it's you can see the, the layers of concrete or asphalt or granite um, in there. And so, I mean, I don't know if we, I don't think you're simply looking at just putting another layer or something on top through there. I think no, you're looking at a complete uh, I think reconstruction. You like a retaining wall and then fill it in and then stay right. over. I think it's. I mean, really if you're going that route, you're, you're talking engineers, presumably. Uh, it's along a state aid road. I don't think it's going to be any much help for it. Um, you don't think what? there'll be much help for it financially from grants or anything like that. I mean, unless we can get a safe routes to school thing, which is probably pushing the limits on that range. It's going to be so many miles or feet away from the school. I can see, I mean, the grant funding for sidewalks generally is not great right now. And do you say that it would require an engineer's preliminary uh, because it's a state road? Oh, you're not sure. I think generally it would be wise to consider an engineer's design, but um, I don't know that it would require it. I mean, the state usually separates itself from the sidewalks, but where there's not much shoulder or much in between, you know, it, it may or may not require some modification. You can't m move much in the road there. I mean, there's not much room, but it would be something you presumably want someone to design. And that in itself usually runs what, 30, 40 grand. Probably. So we'll be looking at that and we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Sure. Is that something we can just ask Kevin to look at and see if there's any quick fix that you can think of? Can, yeah. That'd be my information. I mean, he's done good work on sidewalks before and he, he builds foundations. Mm -hmm. He might have an idea that could maybe be a temporary fix to get us through a little yes. bit. But it's, worth it's worth a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can ask him. Yeah. Does anyone else say anything? Uh, I move we adjourn. Second. Second by Jake Thompson. All those in favor? Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you. See you tomorrow.